Oh, oh, well, 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 welcome back. Animal farm sub work. A little bummed about that. But luckily, the lesson rules. So here's our learning target. I will be able to. Here's a verb for you. Sharpen. My pronoun. Understanding. Noun. Of preposition. Allegory. Noun. By preposition. Synthesizing. Definitions. Examples. Synthesizing being the verb. Definitions is a noun. Examples is a noun. Animal farm is a noun. And conjunction. Analyses. There's another noun of the novella. The novella being animal farm. So I will be able to sharpen my understanding of allegory by synthesizing definitions, examples, animal farm, and analyses of the novella. Please go to slide two. Turn on the highlighter and switch it over to orange, please. Please do so now. If anyone has a computer and they're not signed in, you absolutely need to do this. This is required of you. If you do not have a computer today, you are trying to complete three to four vocabulary sheets. And I'll show you those soon. But first, synthesizing and putting the pieces together. Take a moment, color in that idea for synthesizing. Because when you synthesize something, you take a bunch of different ideas and you put them all together. Just like all these pigs here. One, two, highlight three, highlight four. All have different papers that go into this and one thing prints out. In the book we were just finished, Animal Farm, that would most likely be um, Napoleon's Orders. Please take a moment to make your screen look just like mine. Sub, please pause it. Students, please shade in the light bulb and dots above each of those typing pigs. Thank you for pausing it during the whistle now that we've resumed to slide three. This is a reminder that those of you without a computer today are to do as many of these um, sheets as you can. Take a moment to notice a few things about these directions for this paper assignment. This paper assignment is located in a giant pile closest to the orange closet. This is in a giant pile closest to the orange closet. It's only for students without a computer. Number one. Put a box around the following words, Orwellian, allegory, propaganda, communism, pathos, logos, and ethos. Two, underline all details that match the word propaganda. Number three, circle any phrases that match the word Orwellian. Number four, put a check mark next to all details that match the phrase pathos, logos, ethos. And number five, find the emojis. Put a number one through five next to your top five favorite images. Let's take a moment and think about this word allegory like we said we would. Based on this Google search, what is an allegory often used to explore? Rank the three most interesting pictures. Drag the exclamation point to the most relevant to this month's class discussion. So let's take a moment and see if we can find our three most interesting pictures. Well, I gotta say most interesting for me is number one with a close tie with this sort of gigantoid down here. I gotta say horse versus snake I love is number three. Um, the one that seems most relevant to what we're doing seems this one because it looks like she's writing commandments like the seven commandments for Animal Farm. Now perhaps yours are different. Maybe your number one is down here. Maybe your number two is over here. Maybe your number three happens to be this one. Whichever, I'd like you to please take the time now to rank the top three most interesting pictures on this page and to drag the exclamation point to the one that you feel is most relevant to the book Animal Farm. Please take 30 seconds to do so now. Excellent work. Slide five. Here we have a connotation meter, and I give you two little choices of things that you can use to um, uh, change the, to mark the uh, word allegory and its connotation here. So a connotation, just a reminder, is the 
life of a word, the emotional charge of a word. So let's go ahead and read this particular example for allegory and choose where we're going to mark it on the um, connotation chart. Authors use allegory to tell stories with hidden meanings or messages. It's like hiding a surprise inside a present. Instead of saying something directly, they use characters and events to represent bigger ideas. This makes the story more fun and interesting because you have to figure out what the hidden message is. So just like solving a puzzle, reading allegories helps us think more deeply about what the author is trying to teach us. Well, I think that's very positive for sure. It doesn't seem to be down on the concept of allegory. So I'm going to be putting my yellow mark right here. The green mark I'm not going to use because it, it won't help me mark anything negative because it's not a very negative definition. There's our sample one. Let's try another one together after we look at some pictures. So based on this Google search, what is an allegory often used to explore? Rank the top three most interesting pictures and drag the exclamation point to the most relevant to this month's class discussion. Mm, I gotta say, the one that jumps out at me the most is this weird three head guy. Um, this sort of silhouetted god above a planet of some sort, maybe, over here. And the third most interesting to me, I love the man slash Skellington over there. Most relevant to us? Hmm. Hmm. I am going to have to say... The most interesting to me, or most relevant to me, is... this one because it looks like it has a skull and animal farm has more death than i would have expected but of course you can put your number ones your number twos and your number threes in a different spot and you might find something else more relevant to uh, animal farm so i'd like you to rank one two and three favorites and the one closest to the book animal farm right now excellent Let's see where this goes on the connotation meter for allegory. Some authors think allegories are much too much like teacher, like a teacher trying to give a lesson. Imagine if every story felt like homework. They believe that readers should enjoy stories without feeling like they're being taught something all the time. Instead, they prefer stories that let readers have their own interpretations and enjoy the adventure without feeling like they're in a classroom. It's like they want to give readers the freedom to explore the story and its meaning on their own, like a treasure hunt. Well, this seems a little bit more negative. So I'm going to be putting my green mark here on a, a, a more negative spot. All right? And that reminds me that I might have reversed it earlier. This should be going on a positive spot over here. Whoops. Okay. Slide eight. Based on this Google search, what is an allegory often used to explore? Rank the top three most interesting pictures and drag the exclamation point to the most relevant to this month's class. We have now done this several times. So I'm going to ask you to rank number one for one picture, number two for another picture, and number three for another picture. Then to drag this to a relevant picture to this um, book, Animal Farm. Please do so now. Let's look at this definition of allegory on slide nine, and let's take the time to mark where it should go on the connotation meter. Of course, Orwell has some clever strategies when he wrote Animal Farm. By the using animals as characters, he made the story accessible and engaging for readers of all ages. But beneath the surface, he tackled big themes like power and corruption, which got readers thinking about real world issues. The timing of the book's release was also crucial. It came out during a period when people were deeply interested in politics and social change, so they could easily connect with the story's messages. Animal Farm wasn't just a simple tale. It was a reflection of the world around them, prompting readers to consider the parallels between the animal characters' struggles and the events unfolding in society. 
Well, that to me makes allegory sound pretty cool. And it makes it sound like it really spoke to the time. So I'm going to be putting mine somewhere here in the positive. Where are you going to put your mark for this word allegory? Please do so now. Slide 10. Let's examine some custom art that matches allegory, Stalinism, and Animal Farm. List three things you notice about this painting. Everybody, please write the following sentence starter. This painting contains. This, T-H-I-S, space, painting, P-A-I-N-T-I-N-G, space, contains, C-O-N-T-A-I-N-S. And three things that I noticed right away is, um, hmm, number one, I notice the pig's nose. Number two, I notice that it is um, only like two colors, right? It only has the two colors. And number three, hmm. I'm going to think about that one while you write your number one, two, and three. What are three things you notice here in this painting? Please take the time to list them now. Excellent work. Slide 11. Let's look at the dictionary definition. So this is technically the denotation, but after we put all the words together, let's see if we can't find a connotation for the word allegory, separate from those other longer paragraph-like definitions and examples we were using earlier. Uh, dictionary, definitions from the Oxford languages, learn more later. Allegory, noun, a story or picture that can be interpreted to reveal a hidden meaning, typically a moral or political meaning. Pilgrim's Progress is an allegory of the spiritual journal journey. Some similar words include parable, analogy, metaphor, symbol, emblem, story, tale, myth, legend, saga, fable, apologue, apologue rather. Me, I'm sensing positive things that we're getting at a hidden meaning, which seems good in this instance. Spiritual journey seems good. Words like myth, legend, uh, parable all seem good. So I'm going to put it right over here. Very positive. Please take the time to mark the word allegory again on the connotation meter for yourself. Excellent work. Directions. Provide the who and what for the paragraph. Some people feel that George Orwell's Animal Farm is too much like a teacher trying to give a lesson because it tells a story in a very straightforward way. Instead of readers figuring out things for themselves, it kind of spells all of the very thing out. Also, because it talks about politics and power so openly, it can feel like the author is preaching or lecturing rather than reader letting readers make up their own minds. So while Animal Farm has an important message about power and corruption, some people think it's a bit too obvious and doesn't leave much room for readers to think for themselves. So the who here is people who are critical of Animal Farm. So I'm gonna put critics of Animal Farm. Now the second part and more difficult part is the what. What do critics about, uh, think about Animal Farm? They think the allegory is too simple or easy to tell the reader anything useful about the world, which is quite a charge. Now you can copy mine or you can write your own who and what. This is just the first one, there'll be more. Please take the time to who and what this paragraph on slide 12 now. Excellent. Slide 13. 
Animal Farm by George Orwell is celebrated as a powerful critique of communism because it tells the story of farm animals who rebel against their human owner only to see their revolution hijacked by power-hungry pigs. Through this allegory, Orwell mirrors the events of the Russian Revolution and exposes the corruption and betrayal that often accompany revolutions. The simple storytelling and use of animal characters to make the complex political ideas accessible to readers of all ages allow them to understand the dangers of totalitarianism and propaganda. Orwell's message in Animal Farm serves as a cautionary tale about how the abuse of power and the importance of critical thinking. By showing how the pigs exploit language and manipulate their fellow animals, he highlights the need for vigilance in the face of authoritarianism. Overall, Animal Farm stands as a timeless reminder of the risks of sacrificing freedom for the promise of equality, making it poignant and fault-provoking read for readers of all ages. Please take the time to write the who and the what that these two paragraphs are mostly about. Please take the time to do so now. You may solicit the support of a substitute. Excellent work. Take a moment, please, and rank the pictures and find the one that's most relevant. There may be some overlap. Well, my number one is definitely this elaborate boar here, but I do like the Tommy DePaula energy here. And for three, I like, um, we got the devil clock one and we've got the factory one. I'm going to say devil clock since um, Napoleon is so outwardly violent in Animal Farm, but you may certainly have a different one that's relevant. You may have a different one that you enjoy and you might not like the same one as me at all. So you might want to take the time now to mark your one, two, and three favorites and one that seems relevant to Animal Farm. Please take the time to do so now. <whistles> Slide 15. Based on the Google search, what is an allegory often used to explore? Rank the top three most interesting pictures and drag the exclamation point to the most relevant to this month's class discussion. Please take a moment and drag your one, two, three, and exclamation point to your favorites and the most relevant picture to, for our class discussion now. Go ahead. Please do the following on 16. Based on this Google search, what is an allegory often used to explore? Rank the top three most interesting pictures and drag the exclamation point to the most relevant to this month's class discussion. I would caution you to think most closely about Napoleon and how he's described. Please do so now. Slide 17. Based on this Google search, what is an allegory often used to explore? Rank the top three most interesting pictures and drag the exclamation point to the most relevant to this month's class discussion, that is allegory. Please take the time to do so now. exclamation point for me. I like how there's a world that he's trying to take over. So I'm putting my exclamation point right there next to the one hugging the globe. Slide 18. Based on this Google search, what is an allegory often used to explore? Rank the top three most interesting pictures and drag the exclamation point to the most relevant to this month's class discussion. Well, for me, I like the sort of my, this farm's a factory for me now. I do like the crazed uh, Fez sporting one. And I have to say the third one, I like that religion ends up being bound up with ideas like communism since they're all epistemically uh, similar. 
All right, and then the one that seems most relevant to me to Animal Farm, um, I would have to say is probably this one over here too, since they were making a windmill and trying to make life more convenient. Please take a moment and put the exclamation point in one, two, and three where you think they most belong. Take the time to do so now. Slide 19. Based on this Google search, what is an allegory often used to explore? Rank the top three most interesting pictures and drag the exclamation point to the most relevant to this month's class discussion. Well, for me, I've really been hitting hard how evil Napoleon is, so I'm putting him there. My number two, gotta go with the old Soviet Union style art. And then finally, this sort of Orwellian, um, insane, all bad guy in a wrinkle in time type thing, number three down here. And the exclamation point, I think most relevant would be the one with the windmill here again. It seems closest to Russia. You, of course, can have your own opinion and move your ones and your twos, threes, and exclamation point to the more deserving in your opinion. Go ahead and do so now. Please provide the who and what for these three paragraphs. Some people feel that George Orwell's Animal Farm is too much like a teacher trying to give a lesson because it tells its story in a very straightforward way. Instead of letting readers figure things out for themselves, it kind of spells everything out. And also because it talks about politics and power so openly, they can feel like the author is preaching or lecturing rather than letting readers make up their own minds. So while Animal Farm has an important message about power and corruption, some people think it's a bit too obvious and doesn't leave much room for the readers to think for themselves. Animal Farm by George Orwell is also celebrated as a powerful critique of communism because it tells the story of farm animals who rebel against their human owner only to see their revolution hijacked by power-hungry pigs. Through this allegory, Orwell mirrors the events of the Russian Revolution and exposes the corruption and betrayal that often accompany revolutions. The simple storytelling and use of animal crackers make sure that complex political ideas are accessible to readers of all ages, allowing them to understand the dangers of totalitarianism and propaganda. Orwell's mission in Animal Farm serves as a cautionary tale about the abuse of power and the importance of critical thinking. By showing how pigs exploit language and manipulate their fellow animals, he highlights the need for vigilance in the face of authoritarianism. Overall, Animal Farm stands as a timeless reminder of the risks of sacrificing freedom for the promise of equality, making it a poignant, poignant and thought-provoking read for readers of all ages. So I would list number one, who, in parentheses, who, and parentheses plus beginning parentheses and what and close parentheses same for number two please take the time to Provide a who or what for all three paragraphs now. A reminder for those of you without computers are finishing uh, minimum four of these vocabulary sheets. Finally, Provide the who and what for this, it says three paragraphs, but just one, please. Please provide a who and what. So this is just number one, who and what. Using familiar characters, allegories often use characters or settings that are familiar to us, like animals or fantasy worlds. This helps us understand historical events better by making them relatable, hiding big ideas inside stories instead of directly talking about complicated historical events. Allegories hide them inside stories. It's like hiding vegetables in your favorite meal. You get the good stuff without even realizing it. Making history fun. Learning about history 
through stories is some more fun, is way more fun than just reading. Making uh, facts and dates, allegories and add excitement, adventure, to historical events, seeing different perspectives. In allegories, characters often represent different groups of people or ideas. This helps us see events from different points of view, giving us a fuller picture of history. Teaching lessons without being boring. Allegories sneak in important lessons about history without feeling like boring history. Um, it's like learning while playing your favorite game. Understanding complex ideas. Sometimes history can be tricky to understand, especially for younger students. Allegories simplify complex ideas, making them easier to grasp. Connecting past and present. Allegories often relate historical events to things happening in our world today. This helps us see how history is still relevant and affects our lives today. So there's the final slide. Thank you for your hard work. I'll see you very, very, very soon.